Welcome. Welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you for tuning in. Boy, it is such a busy time of the year, so much going on. Uh, and we are so excited today to introduce to you a church that's new to us, Bay Focus, and fairly new to the Tampa Bay area. And we want you to get plugged into a church, particularly at the holidays and, and any, any time of the year, of course. But this, sh this church has got so much going on, and we're excited to have their founders and pastors with us today, Courageous Church in uh, Tampa. But also, also, we are going to be uh, sitting down. Elise Merritt, our reporter uh, for Bay Focus, is going to talk with a pastoral counselor, Janet Tatum, a little bit later on how you can navigate the holidays this time of year. Something that can be hard on people sometimes, but they're going to give you some real insight and in how God can help you. But first of all, let's take a look at Courageous Church in Tampa. The word spoken of a courageous church this year was acceleration. And over the past 12 months, God has done so much. We moved from a set up and tear down model to a more stable lease property. In this process, our church raised $121,000 to pay for the much needed renovations to our new space. Over the summer, we were able to raise an additional $20,000 to outfit our kids' ministry space and so into the next generation. Lives are being changed every week at Courageous Church. Since moving into our new building, we have seen 158 people say yes to Jesus. Our courageous people are boldly declaring their faith in Christ as 61 people have been baptized since the start of the year. We are also guiding people to take the next step in their courageous journey, starting a discipleship program called Courageous Life. 121 people are actively attending this life-changing course to become equipped to preach the gospel. We also remain committed to our anti-human trafficking efforts, partnering with eight different human trafficking organizations locally to push back the attacks of the enemy on our city. Courageous Church is making an impact beyond the four walls church, the gospel is going forth worldwide as we have seen 195,000 views on our YouTube channel globally. Nearly 5,000 people are plugged into our church across social media platforms and 2,200 have searched for Courageous Church on Google in Tampa alone. We maintain a perfect five-star rating on Google with dozens of people commenting and sharing their stories. The church is growing rapidly as we are now up to 16 employees, both full and part-time. So in response to this rapid growth, we are moving to a three-service model so people can continue bringing their family and friends to Courageous Church. These numbers are incredible, but it's important to remember every number is a person, and every person has a story, and every story matters to God. When I first came here, I was in a backslidden state. Um, I knew the Lord, but I had just kind of slipped back into the things that I used to do uh, with the drugs and, and other things. When I first got here, um, I was a little rough, little, little rough. I was kind of, you know, reluctant to uh, to get in the Word and to pray. But man, I kept coming, and uh, people would call me if they didn't see me on a weekend. They they would say, "Where you at, man? Where you been?" And uh, it kept me accountable. And the family, the small groups here, man, I found people to pour into me and that care about me truly. And um, just been wonderful to be a part of Courageous Church. Showed up to church with a lot of baggage. Uh, I was dealing with like an addiction and a lot of other problems in my life. And the people here at Courageous accepted me for who I was and really made me feel like I was at home. It was my home away from home. You know, I live an hour away from here. Pastor O and Pastor Crystal, they gave me a place to serve immediately and I was able to break free from all the things that I came here with and I can't be thankful enough for everything they've done for me. So I'm forever grateful for Courageous Church and I would encourage anybody <laughs> None of this would be possible without your faithful giving and generosity over the last 12 months. Thank you. Courageous Church, Courageous People. Oh, that gives you a look at Courageous Church in Tampa, and we are honored to have the founders and lead pastors of this church, Pastors Ontario and Crystal Green with us tonight. Welcome. Yes, hi. Welcome Thank to the you show. For Welcome to Be Focus. We're excited to be here. <laughs> first time, first time meeting you guys. Uh, we have a mutual friend, a mutual friend of CTN and Mark Payne. Yes. Yeah. And he um, 
uh, cued me to you guys and clued me in on what's going on. Wonderful things in Tampa. Tell us, first of all, before I ask you a little more, where's the church located in service times? Okay, so the church is located at 1602 North, uh, North Florida Boulevard. Mm -hmm. It's located right across the street from the Salvation Army. Most mm -hmm. people who know Tampa know the landmark Armature Works. Yes. And so we are about a football field away from Armature Works. What yeah. a great location. Yeah. That We're is a excited. fabulous We're location. We're very fortunate. You yes. are. I mean, yes. particularly, you know, Armature Works, that whole area is so booming mm -hmm. and so growing. Um, why Tampa? Why did you start? You, you have a background. Yeah. I want to tell our viewers, Christ for the Nations. You've been evangelist, associate pastors with Bishop T.D. Jakes yes. Yes. at the yes. Potter's House yes. in Dallas. Yes. An awesome testimony yourself. Yes. Thank Give you. us the, the, the short version on how you got into ministry and okay. why Tampa? Yeah. Okay. Well, my mother was a drug addict from the time I was born until I was about 12 years old. She went to prison and got saved, gave her life to Jesus. And, uh, at, and she got saved by hearing Bishop Jakes preach via satellite. She got out of jail, drug me to church. I got saved 15 years old in the same church and I've been on fire for the Lord since then. Wow. Um, we went on to full-time ministry after I graduated from high school, I met my wife in Houston and at Texas Southern University where yeah. we got married. And then quickly we went right into training for full-time ministry, Christ for the Nations. And we've been in full-time ministry since we've graduated from Christ for the Nations. Why Tampa? Great question. Tampa, yeah, because yeah. I came for a pastors and leaders conference that my pastor, Bishop Jakes, did here in 2019, April of 2019. And while I was here, all three days, I just kept getting this feeling and sense in my heart that God was saying something to me. He was trying to pull me in. Something was up in this city. And I've been to many different cities, but something was different about Tampa. Yeah. And every day I kept calling her. I was like, something's up. Something's up. <laughs> she was like, it's the pizza you ate. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Next day, something's up, something's up until day three when I came off the, off the uh, exit right by the downtown area. I looked over towards the downtown, saw a huge sign that says, Go Bucks. You know, they had the big yeah, Go Bucks on the side. Sign. We love it. Yeah. But I, the way I can explain it, it's like it felt like that feeling you get when you fall in love for the first time. My heart exploded when I looked into the downtown area, yeah. and I immediately knew we were called to plant a church here. Yeah. Well, I think that's been proven out in three years now. Three years. Three years. January, January is our three-year anniversary. Is our and just what we witnessed there and looked at our viewers, saw in the video the growth and everything that has happened. Now, this is a team effort. So, yeah. Crystal, you are a co-pastor, and what does that mean? What do you? How do? How do you work this with the two of you? Well, we share a lot of the load. Um, yeah. Not only that, I oversee a lot of the ministries. Um, mm -hmm. I oversee half of our staff um, at our church. And also we share the load with speaking here and there. So yeah. um, I love to be able to do that. And looking over, we have one of our ministries that we have. We have the A-Team, and that's our anti-human trafficking arm of our church. Wow. And that's one of the passions given both of our you know, upbringing. It's a passion of our church. So that's where I spent a lot of my focus. Yeah, um, that's partnering. a big job. You know, I'm seeing right. the body of Christ rise up. Mm -hmm. and really try to address issues like that. Absolutely. The yes. trafficking issue. Absolutely. But so what is it, if, if you would put into, um, you, I'm assuming you have the various, I know you do outreach, yeah. community outreach. We want to put a plug in, by the way. We're at the holidays, so you do have a, a Christmas Eve service, right? That yes. You, people we, could come. We have a Christmas Eve service on Sunday. So yeah. you, oh, are, you guys are that? welcome to come and join us for one of our three services, 9 yeah. o'clock, 1045 yeah. or 1230. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be celebrating Jesus. We're starting a series in December called Behold. Mm -hmm. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. We're going to make sure that people know about his about uh, his arrival that. to the earth. And uh, we're going to focus hard on that in the month of December. So we love I love that. I love it when churches target the season. But it, I know you have the various arms, I'm sure, for youth, children, and everything. That It's a full family-oriented church. Yes. Absolutely. Um, phenomenal worship. I've watched some of it online. Um, you guys know how to worship. Yeah. <laughs> you know how to worship with your music. And um, But what is your, if you're going to say a mission statement, if you're going to say, you know, why are, are, what are you trying to accomplish with the yeah. ministry? Yeah, I, I think that our, our biggest uh, driving point, um, we have two really big causes that we're after. Number one, we know that t that uh, Tampa is 80% unchurched. Last yes. we saw yeah. the statistics from George Barna, he stated that the, uh, the city was 80% unchurched. And so we knew that this was a great place that needed another life-giving church. We're not the only life-giving church in the city. No. We're one of the life-giving churches in the city. Yeah. And we came to partner with the, the kingdom here in Tampa to really yeah. help bring more light into this city, more courage in this city. 
Another thing is for us, my wife and I both, we have parents that lived in the, uh, the entire, the, the lane of trafficking and, and drug addiction and, and yeah, prostitution and all those life. things, the street life. Mm -hmm. And so we both have been redeemed from that. We are like the first generation to be redeemed from it. My children love the yes. Lord. They're saved. They're coming after the Lord. And now my wife and I, we've really broken a stronghold over our lives. And so we walk into the city with a lot of confidence, knowing that we carry an anointing to help bring that stronghold down in our city. And right where we are, we make the loudest noise we can. We partner with as many people as we can that are combating human trafficking yeah. to really go after this cause. And so it really is a place where, where you know, we see courageous people step into motion. I mean, we have almost 200 dream teamers, which are volunteers. We have hundreds of people going to the church. And we're seeing God do something in the hearts of people that are really causing them to rise up in their righteousness and see who God is and, and just demonstrate that throughout everything they do by what they're learning and taking in when they come to Courageous Church. Now you guys are, you're, you're I, I love all this, but by the way, this is so, you're so outer directed from the get go. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, you, you didn't take 10 years to build the base. You said, mm -hmm. we're getting out there. No, right away. Right yeah. away, right away. And hence, I think, the name Courageous. That's yes. right. That's right. That's right. That's mm -hmm. a strong yeah. word. It is. And we launched in the middle of the pandemic. That's oh. right. So at the Hardest height, time. at the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we had to have a lot of courage. Oh to my do goodness. That. And did we, you we do this on your own? Did you have it? I mean, this no. Is a no, 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 plant. no, 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 no. This was a church plant, and we actually partnered with the with the with the most the number one church planting organization in the world called Arc. Arc. Arc churches. I thought uh, so. We love Association Arc. Association of we're, Related we're very Churches. Wonderful organization. We love Arc. They are life giving and they're amazing, and they helped us a lot. Along with a lot of our other friends, family, and people who yeah. saw what we were doing and partnered with us to help get this church off the ground. I, yeah. I love it. And I love it that you're connected with uh, Association of Related Churches. Mm -hmm. are, uh, they are a tremendous organization, so there's a, a good connection there. It's amazing to see what you've done. Okay, we just have a couple minutes left. How can our viewers, the best way to connect with, with you? What it, What is, we're showing on screen the yeah. website and yeah. different ways, um, but you know, just, just speak to our viewers on what, what you would say, and I'm gonna even let you turn to the camera okay. <laughs> if you okay. want to, okay. and, address our, and okay. address our viewers. You invite them to the church and how can they connect with you? Well, um, number one, you can find us on YouTube. Go check us out. Most people check us out on YouTube before they come and check us out yes. in person. And so all of our content is located on YouTube. Look up Courageous Church Tampa. You can also check check us out on all of our social medias. We have TikTok, we have Facebook and Instagram. Yes. Uh, look up Courageous Church. You'll find us there. We're the only Courageous Church in Tampa. And uh, we would love to be able to, to have you come and visit and hang out with us. Uh, we'll treat you like family when you come. If you show up, make sure you let, let us know you heard about us here on the network. And uh, we'd love to shake your hand. We'd love to welcome you into the house of God. God's doing something great at Courageous Church. Mm -hmm. We'd love for you to come join us and be, a, be, a, be with us and uh, be about it as well. I love it. I love what it. What do you want to tell them, Pastor Crystal? Uh, God is good, and we can't <laughs> wait to see you. <laughs> you know what? I, I I just I love when I and I want to thank you both for coming on to start with today, mm -hmm. because um, it's not always easy getting both the husband wife teams on the show yes. because there's things going on with the kids during yes. the day. Exactly. We we do the show during the day, mm -hmm. and the various things will have you both on. But I know this has had to have been, and we're, we we'll have to explore this in a future interview. But uh, the challenge of planning a church with a family with children. Oh, making yeah. the move and the whole so i i applaud you guys Thank doing you. this plucked Thank from you. you know uh you weren't in tampa you moved to tampa yeah. to do this that's right 21 years of marriage made oh. it possible the stability of our marriage yeah actually helped us to produce this ministry yeah, yeah i mean the, the, this is no easy task you follow god's calling and he has blessed it yes Thank yes. Thank you both so much. You will continue to bless it. Aww. So Thank you. Thank you for what an awesome us. ministry. If you're looking for a church in Tampa, you want to look up uh, Courageous Church. I just absolutely adore that name uh, uh, because that is just one of my favorite scriptures too throughout the Bible when the word courage comes up, be strong and courageous. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to uh, be right back with more Bay Focus. Elise Merritt is going to uh, do an interview coming up telling you how you can help navigate the holidays and we all need that help. We'll be right back.
welcome. Welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have so many things to tell you about. There's some exciting things coming up. The power of God is so much stronger. The power of Jesus is so much stronger. Hello and welcome to Bay Focus. I'm Elise Merritt and I'm so glad you've joined us today. And one of the wonderful things about the holiday season is that we're always with family, getting together with loved ones and the camaraderie, the joy. Um, but sometimes it's actually difficult for people who are going through loss, sadness, sorrow. And I wanted to address that today. And so today I have a wonderful guest on named Janet Tatum, and she's a pastoral counselor and a counselor in general and loves to share with people how to get through these tough days for some people that ordinarily would seem like a joy. So we're glad you're here. And with that, I'd like to introduce Janet Tatum. Welcome, Janet. We're Thank so you. happy you're here. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Yes. Um, so what, what I was mentioning is about the holidays in general. Sometimes um, people who you would ordinarily think have a wonderful, you know, exciting time ahead mm -hmm. and gathering presents, preparing for loved ones to come over, it's actually um, challenging. Mm -hmm. And can you help those who maybe are navigating the loss of a loved one, navigating losing a job, going through divorce, and it's actually not a, a good time for them and how they can get through and cope a little bit better? Mm -hmm. One of the first things that comes to my heart, <clears throat> and I can speak to it in a number of different ways, but is to breathe. Mm -hmm. it is, it, it's one of my, my favorite, simplest things to do when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling sad, when I'm having an emotion that is I, I don't like or is a little hard. So just take a nice deep breath. God is in our breath. Mm -hmm. We are never closer to the Lord than when we actually just breathe. Wow. So also allowing for your feelings to have a voice. Mm -hmm. It is our tendency to tend to suppress and press down and makes me think of something John Eldridge talks about a lot. I love his work, um, Wild at Heart, and how we push that piece of the heart down mm -hmm. as if it is a uh, giving us bad directions and and also in in the body of Christ sometimes we are wrongly taught to suppress feelings mm -hmm. and so that'll actually make things more difficult our anxieties will rise up the depression will rise up the loneliness mm -hmm. so allow yourself to feel what you're feeling mm -hmm. um loneliness is a very common thing and sa some sadness during the holiday you know, it's not always uh, trauma related. If it's chronic, yes, mm -hmm. I I am a you know trained in in trauma, particularly in for the body of Christ through wounds that we experience, spiritual wounds, betrayals, mm -hmm. divorces. You know, pastors' kids just raising in Christian homes can be causing problems. Um, so. Mm -hmm. um, Keep it really simple. Let yourself breathe. Let yourself feel what you have to feel. Call a friend. Mm -hmm. Call, even if it's a neighbor who is your most trusted person with your stories because your family doesn't want to hear it anymore or whatever it may be. Um, and of course, open the, open the word. Mm. Open the word. Yeah. Sometimes simply touching. I've been at that place in yeah. my life when... Grief was so deep that yeah. that's all I could think to do. When you can't do. even cry out, you just right. I, I literally you just yeah. put my hands on the pages, knowing it was going to absorb into my heart. Yeah. So you know, just trust trust that your heart is doing what God made it to do. Mm -hmm. um, feelings are indicators. So a lot of what's happening at Christmas isn't the lack of presence. P e p r e s e n t s it's the lack of presence of mm. people, mis wow. longing for m memories um, as you people that were in those memories. Maybe it's your adult children that yeah. 
you know, we all know people like that, that I know I hear a lot of those stories in my office. Mm. Um, believers who have raised their kids in the faith, who've done so much good, and the kids are not talking to them, or they're not seeing oh. their grandchildren. Um, so tough. grief and loss is not just the loss of a loved one, which certainly mm -hmm. can be a big part of this, but the grieving and the losses can be mm -hmm. uh, divorces, um, mm -hmm. betra trauma of betrayal. Yeah, so in um, other words, it's like grieving the loss of a relationship that you can no longer attain and grieving the loss Amen. of relationships Amen. that you had hoped for, yes. anticipated and loved, Very and, much. which are no longer present in your life. So you're, you're, you're losing the dream, mm -hmm. but you, you think you are. But I often tell you know people who come is, God, the, the dream is still alive because the dream is from God. If it was to be engaged and, and mm -hmm. that fell through, which I recently had that story and she was so disappointed, but he didn't turn out to be the right person. Right. But the, God planted that dream in a heart. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, the father is very, uh, mm -hmm. our good things mm -hmm. come from him. Our good dreams, yeah. those are not lost. Yeah. But, and I once heard someone say that God gives us the desires of our heart and it's a double entendre in a way because he doesn't just give us the desires of our heart. He actually gives us, he implants those desires to begin with. So he's Amen. the one who embeds those desires in our hearts. Very so it's much. a little bit, it's, 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 it's double a blessing in a right. way. It, it, right. It, mm -hmm. I agree. And so we want to honor those things. Mm -hmm. So even when there, we have emotions around loneliness, loss of particular relationships, we, we, yeah. we know we stand on those are my father's dreams. He planted them in me and um, it's okay to go through a season of feeling sad about it. Yeah. And how do you differentiate? You had said earlier, differentiating between sadness, the blues, grief, and then that fine line going into depression. Mm. What are those differentiating factors? We all feel blue mm. from time to time. Blue is a normal feeling. It, mm -hmm. We can feel blue on a rainy day. We mm -hmm. can feel blue... Um, because a, a friend is leaving town. Mm -hmm. That's different than depression. Okay. Um, so underneath depression, mm -hmm. there can be discouragement, mm -hmm. um, feeling blue, lonely can feel mm -hmm. like it's depression. Depression is a complicated and a complex kind of, uh, if, it's, if it's clinical mm -hmm. and when these feelings of blue are chronic. When mm -hmm. the feeling of um, anger at the loss through divorce is chronic, mm -hmm. that's when it becomes what we, we call trauma, and we want to get a good mm -hmm. a good pastoral counselor, a healing mm -hmm. somebody who's skilled in the healing of the heart mm -hmm. to get to the root of and 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 bring it to the cross. That's mm -hmm. really so. It's kind of getting used to the more healed mm -hmm. up we are, the more yeah. we get accustomed to so knowing in other the difference. Words, so it sounds like at a turning point where someone is no longer just sad, you know, momentarily, where it becomes like a longer term chronic sadness, mm -hmm. a chronic blues, a chronic state of depression, yep. that's when someone maybe should reach out to a counselor, call Absolutely. a doctor you know, call a loved one yes. and explain what's happening because you never want that to, God forbid, go over the threshold into like a suicidal tendency, Very much. which could happen, you know, during the holidays or other mm -hmm. times. So it's, it's really important to reach out to a loved one, especially a pastor, a physician, um, someone you trust and let them know if you're feeling that, if you're feeling mm -hmm. that deep sense of loss, that deep abiding sense that doesn't go away or is chronic so you can get help. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. Yeah. yeah, it's true. And in, in the body of Christ, we can, we can, there's a difference between wishful mm -hmm. thinking mm -hmm. and faith. And we can stay too long unless we're educated enough about how to get proper help inside the body of Christ yeah. for chronic uh, hurt that is not healing. Right, right. And that's so mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Well, in our last few minutes left, Janet, 
I have um, the, the two booklets that you wrote, Whole Again and The Healed Vessel. Can you tell us a little bit about these and how we can get them and what they encourage our viewers to do? The essence is that um, Jesus came to make us whole. The word salvation mm -hmm. means to be made whole. So it means healing. Mm -hmm. And I know from my personal experience, which is how I got into what I do, is mm -hmm. I was already in leadership and, and serving at that level and discovered doing everything right, theology degree, serving the Lord mm -hmm. in ministry. But there was a fracture that came, a betrayal in my okay. own life, mm -hmm. and it just crashed me to the floor. And wow. all the religious rituals, just more Bible studies weren't reaching mm -hmm. the root of the pain. Yeah. So that's how I got to what I do. And I, I offer that to people wow. inside the body because mm -hmm. we, okay. um, we break. Yeah. Well, thank you so much You're for so sharing welcome. that. We appreciate you. We appreciate your prayers for us. And we appreciate your booklets that you um, wrote. Again, it's Whole Again and The Healed Vessel by Janet mm -hmm. Tatum. And you can order these on Janet's website, which is, would you like to share? Yes, it's Janet-Tatum.com. Mm -hmm. Janet-Tatum.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Janet, for You're being so here. Welcome. We truly appreciate you. And we thank you, viewers, for watching and hope this was an encouragement and a great blessing. I'm Elise Merritt for Be Focus. Thank you so much, Elise and Janet Tatum, for that interview. So important to rely on the Lord this time of year to help us with the holiday season and for any difficult times you're going through. But, I, but this is the week. This is our Thanksgiving week, and uh, it should be all year round. But I want to say happy Thanksgiving to you all. So thankful for all that God has done for us uh, every day. And I know you are as well. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Stay tuned in. Uh, to Bay Focus, we want to hear from you and check out Courageous Church. God bless you.